Archbishop Desmond Tutu was and will remain a presence, a strong presence in the lives of many individuals and communities for years to come. I think of the many, many students on whom the Arch conferred degrees during the 25 years that he was the Chancellor of the University of the Western Cape. We will remember how at the end of each graduation ceremony, the Arch would ask the audience to stand and congratulate the graduates on their achievement. And then he would ask all the graduates to stand and look around for their people in the audience. And he would tell them to wave and thank their family and friends and all those who supported and encouraged them during their studies. Then the arch would say to the graduates to sit down and he would ask them again to stand and he would point to the academic staff on the stage and he would say, now you thank them too, for we must not forget that it's through their teaching and guidance that all of us here are celebrating your success today. It is this embodiment, an embodied reality, a sense of community, of our interrelatedness, our interconnectedness that I and many others will remember the Arch for. The first time I came across this aspect of the Arch's philosophy and teaching was when I myself was a student. I remember in an ethics course we were asked to write about a particular person that had, has shaped our moral compass. I chose Desmond Tutu. And during my research, I came across a letter dated May 1976, which the Arch wrote to the then South African Prime Minister, B.J. Foster. And in this letter to the apartheid government itself, the Arch writes to the stalwart of apartheid. And he says, I'm writing to you, Mr. Prime Minister, as one human person to another person gloriously created in the image of the self-same God. I'm writing to you, Mr. Prime Minister, as one Christian to another, united in and through Jesus Christ, who has broken down all that separates us. And so, Archbishop Tutu's appeal for fairness, justice and freedom for all South Africans continues to this day. I say this because the Arch criticized all forms of discrimination and injustices, even when justified by his own church. For when the church, when churches say uh, they cannot condone or bless same-sex unions, the Arch says that he could not worship a homophobic God. This, for me, is the crux of the Arch's legacy. His theology is a prophetic warning against any image of God that serves to separate us from others or justify the oppression of others. For we are all created by the self-same God. And if the apartheid God was idolatrous, then a homophobia God, a homophobic God and a patriarchal God would also be idolatrous because, as Archbishop Desmond Tutu himself said, for me, it is all on the same level. <laughs>